As you guys know, my name is Thomas Burke. I'm um, I'm a food traceability scientist at the Global, Global Food Traceability Center. It's an office of the Institute of Food Technologists, um, based out of DC. Uh, we have a, pol a, a policy, scientific, and educational um, uh, outlook, and we are hope to inform on um, on traceability in a global context. We have a very self-explanatory name. Um, so uh, today I'm talking about One Health traceability and emerging technologies. And I'm, uh, I'm going to talk in a kind of a high level on all three of these things, but I really want to show how what is going on in traceability right now, which is very, very exciting. Um, it's spurring new technologies, disruptive technologies, in fact, and you know, pairing with larger market forces that um, can really bring a lot of benefit to One Health. And I'll t talk individually about a lot of those, tr those emerging technologies and how, um, how the initiatives of traceability can improve and uh, achieve what we're looking at in One Health. So um, I'm going to start with a quote, War is 90% Information by Napoleon. Um, and mostly I just kind of want to have this as a, as a theming part of this talk. Um, uh, you know, really what traceability can really bring us is that you're converting a lot of those unknown unknowns to known unknowns and unknown knowns. And, uh, and so, so really a lot of what traceability can do for, for One Health is kind of reduce that fog of war aspect of, you know, of detecting, um, evaluating and determining causality in disease. Um, and so I'm, uh, in this talk I'm going to kind of talk about One Health in general a little bit first. I mean, I, I know all of you are very familiar with the concept of One Health, but I kind of feel like if you talk to five different people, you get six different explanations on what One Health is and what it all entails. And that's part of the, the nature of what One Health is. Um, and then I'm going to talk about traceability, how that, um, how traceability can help improve One Health and what is going on right now and the, the human initiatives on traceability, how that applies to um, the outputs of One Health. And then I'll talk about emerging technologies, which is kind of paired with, with traceability and how um, those emerging technologies will really help improve um, what we want to do with One Health. So my favorite way of putting One Health is the interplay between animal health, human health, and the environment. Um, other people may have different definitions, but the the emphasis is on increasing cooperation and um, and collaboration between these three disciplines of public health. So, because a lot of the time you have a little bit of tunnel vision when you look when you're working within your your scientific discipline, or um, and you you know because you're you're looking at what the um, uh, at the, these kind of singular outputs you kind of might miss the big picture, or you might miss something that you wouldn't have normally seen because it has a different methodology or there's a different background information. And so, you know, um, a lot of the initiatives of One Health are trying to improve this information sharing and research collaboration between entities. And, um, and what I kind of have, my, my favorite component of what One Health is, is it's the ability to root out novel exposures and vulnerabilities through this collaboration and through, you know, the um, creation of new methodologies and new, um, and new data collection. Oops. So a nice example of a One Health problem and a, and a One Health um, a One Health uh, analysis was looking at the high path even influenza outbreak of 2014, 2015. I don't feel like I need to really go over the the, the, the details of this, but um, a One Health approach was really paramount to understanding what happened in that kind of immediate out um, the immediate aftermath. That kind of autopsy report uh, created by the USDA and epidemiological report trying to evaluate the um, what happened and how to, to 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 prevent it from happening again? It looked at an ecological approach, looking at migratory bird pathway, uh, pathways, looking at genetic an analysis and uh, traditional epidemiological analyses, and um, even looking at environmental uh, environmental strategies, looking at how fomites may have shifted and moved to in to infect um, neighboring farms. And so it took this very collaborative and uh, very all-encompassing look to try to um, to try to elucidate that um, those underlying causes and how we can 
create better uh, biosecurity measures, how we can better understand and anticipate, predict um, animal disease and how, um, and how that might interact with the environment and maybe even potentially human disease. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about some of the pitfalls with One Health. Um, I mean, and these are kind of opinions. I mean, it, it's, like I said, you know, you can have many different explanations of what One Health is, but, uh, or and many different opinions on how that, that those methods look. But what I see a lot of the problem with One Health is that you have just very different methods depending on what problem that you're looking at, what, you know, what disciplines are the people involved, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But the problem is, is you, have the, you have this broad purview and then you end up kind of getting lost because there's so many details, there's so much, in, there's so much or, so li or too little information and there may not be that data that you need to really create the right hypotheses and to create and to find the actual underlying causes of the problem that you're trying to understand. Um, so how does traceability help with the, accomplishing these goals of One Health? So one thing that, you know, as I was talking about with war being 90% information, traceability gives that huge data boost that I think is often lacking when you're trying to accomplish One Health initiatives, uh, where you're trying to combine that, that environmental, human, and animal health information to find and to uh, evaluate hypotheses. Um, so traceability, um, when implementing traceability initiatives and when, um, you know, uh, implementing traceability solutions, there are, there are things that you are, that you are looking at that um, can offer um, benefits to One Health. So, for example, like when you're conducting a traceability risk assessment on your on your on industry, those gap analyses and looking at where how do we track a particular bit of information so that we have assurance throughout the, this entire population is a different approach to, um, say, a more sampling based informational um, uh, strategy. Um, you also have holistic data, so you have um, and holistic is kind of a you know nuanced word, but um, basically what I'm trying to say is, is that as the initiative of traceability increases, we're going to have kind of a nesting of data. So for an example, um, cat, uh, like if you're, if you're looking at aquaculture, for instance, you know, we're having, an, we're having initiatives to have uh, interoperability and, you know, traceability throughout the whole supply chain on, you know, from starting with the geolocation of the, of the particular farm and how it goes through the processing and up to the, to the end retailer. Um, but now we're also having information on, on the fish meal feed, the, the, the feed that um, the fish eat in the, in the particular farms. And that information is also starting to be um, nested within the, the traceability data that's transmitting with the fish. Um, and so this, this kind of tendency to combine data sets and have um, linkages between the, the, the different uh, the part, uh, disparate parts of the data sets will help, you know, um, Kind of link those 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 um, bits together, and I'll, I'll kind of go into that here in, a, uh, in this next slide, which is um, looking at how does the tra the actual bits of traceability data that we're looking at how does that translate to One Health? So um, you know I'm coming from an epidemiological background, so I always am thinking about you know what is the case definition, you know which is you know date, place, manner. Um, and so in, uh, traceability really gives you that ability to link, you know, different data sets together so that you can evaluate a, a One Health uh, hypothesis, for instance. So, like, um, I'm emphasizing a lot on environmental um, data sets, but that's, you know, a lot. So, for instance, um, r environmental science uses a lot of remote sensing, which has, a, you know, um, needs to be linked to the particular geolocation in order to be effective. And so if, when you have the ability to trace a particular animal or a particular uh, animal product through the supply chain and know where it was at a particular time and you know it to the level of the individual, you're able to, you know, have a more assurance and a more, um, uh, a greater granularity on that, on those data points to, to, to evaluate your uh, hypothesis. 
and um, that goes for a date and time, and also what I was talking about with uh, environmental antecedents. So anything that, that would be related to uh, what you're trying to uh, look at. So if you have the geolocation, then you can find out what are the surrounding farms, what are, what are the potential, you know, what's the potential for r rain runoff, or what's the, um, was the feed part of the, the particular aspect that you were looking at. Um, so all of these things can um, be very useful if you're evaluating a One Health um, uh, One Health hypothesis, and also you know just the general trend of automation and, and digitization is going to help um, with data collection. And, and well, I've, I've listed precision because you know I, you the one thing that's very very nice about traceability initiatives is that you want you're trying to implement a way of data collection and a way of data collection that is consistent. So it may not necessarily be the most accurate, but you do have assurance in the process itself, and that can be very useful for One Health. Um, and so what are some methodological enhancements that One Health can benefit with traceability? Um, interoperability. Um, so one of the human processes of, of, of traceability is, is that you can, um, is that you have data standards. Um, it's not a, necessarily a practice for a lot of uh, public health um, individuals to have consistent data standards throughout the, with, I mean, a lot of data sets are very personalized and you have a data dictionary and, you know, you when you pass it off, there's actually kind of an introductory process to the data set. And so, you know, having these kind of standardized uh, data fields can really help uh, improve um, uh, the interoperabilities of these data sets so that when you when you are looking at data that has tr traceability data linked with it um, it can researchers from all over the world or all, in different disciplines can help understand it and that that's becoming more and more of a um, more and more common but with traceability data specifically it has those other additional advantages having those date place manner um, and then also um, there's technological solutions and so sometimes a lot of one Health uh, evaluations are looking at, or one and One Health um, strategies look at geo or look at tracking information, or and or uh, up to up to the minute, or up to uh, in specific time intervals. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of that data collection comes from these emerging technologies that One Health does, itself doesn't have the economic drive to to do, but traceability does have that economic drive to make these data collection devices. Um, and then um, analytics and machine learning is one of the um, is one of the one thing that can really help with One Health. So, going from that kind of epidemiological point of view of of sampling and you know kind of um, thinking about how to work with kind of sparse data to having much more complete um, data sets on on uh, the movement and location and temperature and uh, other aspects of um, a uh, animal livestock and um, and food products is really is going to create these large data sets that um, novel techniques and data science and uh, and uh, and artificial intelligence can help sort through that data and create meaningful conclusions and, and we're even actually having and I can uh, I'll go into this a little bit later but um, we're even having AIs general AIs being able to think creatively have creative problem solving processes to sort through these very large data sets to, to give meaningful conclusions. And these are, um, and so that does, helps me uh, transition to emerging technologies. And so I'm gonna briefly talk about five different technologies. And I'm not gonna concentrate as much on blockchain because I know there's been a lot of discussion already so I'm not gonna explain to you for the umpteenth time how it works. I'm gonna tell you what the advantages are and how those advantages translate into looking at, um, looking at animal uh, disease, human disease, and environmental science. Um, I already kind of talked about data analytics, but um, that technology will continue to advance much more rapidly than a lot of us will really think. I mean, when you, um, it's quite amazing looking into the research on what general AI can do. Um, I mean, and it seems very far-fetched, but when you're looking at, you know, unfathomable amounts of data, the, 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 Processing power and necessary, and the the, the know-how to to make meaningful conclusions on that. Well, AI will have a very large component of that. And then the last three things are really linked together: Internet of Things, embedded sensors, LEO, satellites. And I'll um, explain uh, what low Earth orbit satellites have to do with traceability in a second. Um, but you know, the, just a brief. Um, in case you guys don't know, you know, blockchain is has two big components: it's encryption and networking. Um, I mean, and, and so it's it's really 
not that much more interesting than other um, encryption algorithms that are that make the you know e-commerce possible on the internet. But this idea of you know a large amount of bandwidth and a large amount of network devices and large amounts of server space makes um, makes blockchains possible. And one of the things that's nice about a blockchain is that it's very it can be very decentralized. And so when you have this decentralization, people that are hesitant and uh, uh, people that are hesitant to put their um, information on a in a, like a centralized depository may be more likely to put information where they have uh, or non-public information onto a blockchain because there's that decentralization. They feel like they have ownership of the data because everybody has ownership of the data. And then it's also possible to have um, you know contingencies, you know smart contracts on when information can be revealed, when information can be used, and um, what makes that what is really amenable to traceability with blockchain specifically is it just is it's lowering that bar of hesitancy on actors that don't normally want to um, you know imp put input their own information, and so. Um, you know, lowering the cost, lowering the complications, lowering, lowering the worry about uh, someone overtaking or uh, manipulating your data. Um, th those assurances really help um, speed up the human processes of connecting traceability information. And that's what really needs to be taken away on the conclusions on blockchain, is that it's an aid to the general tenants and principles of traceability rather than an end in itself to traceability. Um, and as that technology develops further, we're going to, we're undoubtedly going to see improvements and we're going, to, but in the meantime, it has gotten everybody very excited about traceability and which, you know, you have, you know, startups that didn't even really think about food sourcing before that are very interested in it. And, um, you know, you have players like IBM, Provenance, you know, Ripe.io that are having the, that are really go, going full speed ahead and using blockchain to achieve traceability. But oh, I have this, this really cool example from Owlting, which I wasn't really that familiar with this company beforehand. I'm not endorsing them. I just, they have a really cool example of how a blockchain could work in, um, in Pork, for instance. And I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you can see it all right. Um, but this has pretty much the complete information on what an end user would look look at when um, they would be using a blockchain. Because you know, a blockchain is just a distributed database. I mean, there's, um, but you, it does have some some unique qualities to it. Namely, the um, I was going to try to use a laser pointer. Um, the the blockchain information, which is just the just the hash and the the blockchain um, moniker. And it has, but it ha but what I really wanted to point out is that some of the information that's possible on it. And this this, this information is possible being on a non blockchain um, non blockchain platform. Um, but so if you were applying this though to One Health, um, like say you were looking at the efficacy of of uh, a particular vaccine, like or uh, you're looking at does you know uh, when does this vaccine become um, effective and was there something, uh, was there some sort of other scenario such as daily temperatures or, um, you know, uh, local temperature that affects the, uh, the efficacy of it. So there's so much information that you can implement on this blockchain that would be able to be carried out um, throughout the supply chain. And so um, it, with using um, the information on here and having access to this information, you would be able to more easily um, link particular pieces of information. So if you were looking at environmental uh, impacts of how, um, um, how uh, it, the, a vaccine may, uh, the a vaccine's efficacy, you can look at a wider variety of sources rather than concentrating on a very small component, having a, you, you can have it over multiple, it would be much more easily possible to have it over multiple um, locations and multiple times. Um, and you'd be able to link that with your environmental data a little bit easier. Or if you were looking at, for instance, one of the things that is being used on it with blockchain and with um, traceability initiatives is labor considerations, especially in the seafood space. There's been concern about, um, for instance, forced labor being used in, in seafood operations. 
Um, and so part of the, some of the um, components of uh, the, some of the traceability initiatives is to have information on labor, whether it's in a form of auditing or um, like an auditing certification or whatever. But the point is, is if you wanted to link a, a human health event with something that happened in uh, a supply chain, like for instance, if there was, um, if you had la labor information on um, uh, in a in a pork example, for instance, um, then that then you could have a um, then you could much more easily link that data together and and investigate the the cause and um, causality of the of the illness. So this is kind of a really recent example, actually. Um, low Earth orbit at satellites. So SpaceX just announced and just agreed with FCC to be able to provide broadband satellite services. Um, and that's because not, I mean, low Earth orbit has been possible for a very long time, obviously. Um, but um, having a network of like 4,000 um, satellites is, is something very new. Because the when you're closer to the, to the Earth, then that obviously the amount of time that's in the sky is less. So there's been new antennae that have been developed to track it as it goes overhead. And because the satellites are so close to you, you have a lower latency and you can have a higher bandwidth. And this, mean, this will enable there to be, you know, internet that's actually capable of even competing with a fiber optic latency and speed um, all over the world. So there, there's big applications specifically in rural areas that traditionally haven't had access to this high speed of internet and, um, and seafood. Um, and a lot of, and a lot of uh, traceability initiatives are, you know, kind of assume that there's some sort of internet connectivity. Um, and that, that kind of leads me into the next, the, the next two things that I was talking about, which are internet of things and embedded sensors. So these are automated d data collection, um, Paradigms, basically, um, embedded sensors just collecting particular parts of particular types of information and having that networked and centrally um, centrally uh, collected and having it, you know, uh, paired together and having complete data sets uh, looking at all at these multiple inputs and having that information, like I, again, like I said, can be more easily linked to particular times and places, which helps in the One Health considerations. Um, so, in conclusion, um, traceability in One Health, um, One Health can really gain a lot of uh, information from traceability initiatives, um, mostly in interoperability and looking at, and pairing uh, data sets through um, the, this more complete uh, look at um, environmental con considerations, animal health, and then also where in the supply chain, where in the um, where um, animals are uh, in contact with humans. And oftentimes when we're investigating a zoonotic um, event, it is difficult to know when, when, that, um, when that person met that particular uh, animal. And so w with the ability of, of um, traceability, we're, we're going to be able to help better have these, uh, this data to accomplish One Health initiatives. And I just, uh, if you'd like to contact me, that's my email, tburke at ift.org. And we also have a lot of resources on traceability in general on our website, ift.org slash gftc.aspx. Um, and it's, um, we have information on traceability pilots and we have uh, information on, um, uh, on other research endeavors that we've completed on, on traceability. Uh, we have a lot of information on, on seafood specifically, but we also have information on work we've done with PTI and with produce and with um, and livestock.